Something awful is growing within me. I'm a 29-year-old woman named Nancy, and this is my first pregnancy. There was nothing abnormal about my baby's conception. I've lived a normal, middle-class suburban life. No satanic rituals, no cults, nothing that Hollywood films often imply to be the culprit. Uh, I suppose I'd better explain why I'm going to die. I'll talk about the stages of my pregnancy. Twelve weeks. Everybody uses the cliché that pregnancy is no walk in the park. But I knew my symptoms were unusual at the very first ultrasound scan. My husband, Ralph, came with me. And nothing could have prepared us for what we would see. The baby, much to our horror, had long spindly arms and legs. And the worst part was the look on Dr. Samson's face. She was smiling. There was something uncanny about her skin. It seemed oversized and loose-fitting, though that was certainly enough to torten my heart. If she'd looked ordinary, I might have dismissed her jolly reaction as an attempt to put us at ease. Is that normal? Ralph asked. Every baby is special, the doctor answered, chuckling. <laughs> then she leant over my belly, inaudibly mouthing something to the baby. I cast wide eyes at my husband silently begging for him to save me. Ralph opened his mouth, but the doctor lifted her head before he could speak. Perfectly healthy and happy, she said. Dr. Samson's smiling face followed us as we walked out of the room. We chalked it up to a weird experience. A weird screen glitch, a weird doctor, and a weird day. I wish I'd trusted my fearful instincts. Twenty-one weeks. My husband and I hoped for a slightly more normal picture from my second scan, but Dr. Samson showed us something even more unnerving. The baby seemed too well formed for twenty-one weeks. I suddenly realised that pains hadn't been normal at all. The grinding, tearing sensation in those ghastly elongated limbs taking away at my innards I feared the baby would burst my uterus perfectly healthy Dr. Samson assured me offering that same unhinged smile <laughs> there's something wrong with him there's something wrong with my baby I whimpered crying Ralph started to reassure me that Dr. Samson was a professional, though I knew he shared my terror. He only wanted to keep me safe and sane. He's a good man. Uh, is there... Uh, is there... Uh, is there something wrong with the scanner, perhaps? He asked, hopefully. Dr. Samson giggled. <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. I want a second opinion, I said. I expected the doctor to refuse, but she persisted with that searing smile. And a few days later, my third scan produced a bizarre result. Nothing appeared on the screen. Dr. Horton sighed somberly. <clears throat> it could be a miscarriage or... An ectopic pregnancy. A pregnancy outside of the womb. Uh, we'll need to conduct tests, Nancy. I nodded, but I knew I hadn't miscarried. My pain was worsening with every passing day. But no professionals could ascertain what was happening to me. And Dr. Horton didn't attend my fourth scan. Nobody managed to get in touch with him. So... Dr. Brown took over. Aha! 
found you, baby. He was just playing hide and seek. <laughs> Our new doctor said, laughing. Ralph and I gasped at the screen in terror. Finally, we could see our baby again. In the space of five days, our son had become ginormous. His legs were slinking out of view and his head was filling my womb. For a brief moment, Dr. Brown rubbed his eyes and I realized he wasn't wiping the bags beneath them. Like Dr. Sampson, his flesh seemed to loosely cling to his face. But unlike Dr. Sampson, he seemed keen to keep us calm. The boy might look a little large, but he's healthy, Dr. Brown promised. Perfectly fine. Why does everybody keep saying this is perfectly fine? Ralph asked, finally losing his cool. Something is wrong. I've seen a pregnancy like this before, Dr. Brown interjected, smiling. I promise you that nothing is wrong with your son. He's just a fast grower. <laughs> 32 weeks. We went for scans at different hospitals, but nothing showed up on scanners or results. As far as any other professionals believed, I wasn't pregnant. One terrible night, at 3am, I started to think they might be right. I woke to find myself in a state of sleep paralysis. My lips wouldn't open, and my limbs wouldn't budge, so I wasn't able to wake Ralph. Controlled by some external force, however, my grinding limbs pulled my body out of bed. I could feel something within me like a secondary skeleton, puppeteering my paralysed form towards the ensuite bathroom. I stood before the mirror, trembling in disbelief at my sagging skin, horrified that the thing might burst free and tear me to shreds. My lips, still firmly pressed together, began to curl upwards. It was the same smile that I'd seen on Dr. Sampson's face. 38 weeks. We saw Dr. Brown yesterday. A late emergency scan revealed something. But we didn't even see a baby anymore. Just an indistinguishable mass within my womb. Part of my baby's fully grown torso, perhaps. Perfectly fine, Dr. Brown said, smiling horribly. As we left the hospital in a dazed state of horror, Ralph and I bumped into Dr. Sampson, a woman we hadn't seen in weeks. The deranged doctor gripped my arm, leaning towards me. It won't be long until you walk with us, Takra. <laughs> she giggled into my ear presumably speaking to my baby. And you'll do perfectly fine. We ran. This petrifying pregnancy finally makes sense. The relentless aches in my joints, the ever-drooping bags under my eyes, the throbbing sensation in my head. It feels as if something wants to worm its way in there pancaking my brain against the inside of my skull, replacing it with something else. I'm not going to give birth in two weeks, am I? I'm not pregnant at all. Takra is going to fill my body and wear my skin like a glove, and I'll become one of the loose-fleshed people.